Hi, I'm Steve Moriarty. I'm from moregems.com and we also have a retail store in Crown Point, Indiana on the square. I'm here today to speak to you a little bit about Spessartite garnets. Uh, Spessartite garnet is one of the garnet group uh, which garnets are similar materials that crystallize in the, in the same crystal form, which is cubic. Uh, they were formed uh, pegmatitically, uh, if that's a word, um, but it, it involves uh, volcanism and, and hot molten materials that crystallize and as they crystallize, they form in veins, and, and occasionally we will find garnets in them. Uh, Spessartite garnet was originally found in the middle 1800s uh, in Spessart, Germany, and later also found in Amelia Courthouse in the 1890s in Virginia. Uh, my first experience with it was the Little Three Mine in Ramona, California. Um, it's here near um, San Diego. And uh, Ramona was one of the few producers at the start of my business. Um, it would produce stones that I think the largest maybe I ever cut was a three carat gem, but truly incredible colors. Uh, a reddish orange that even to today are some of the finest garnets that ever came out of the ground. Uh, after that, uh, I started getting material in the middle 1800s from a gentleman named uh, Hamid Bangush from Pakistan. Uh, this material became known as cashmerine because where it was found was in the Kashmir region, uh, which is uh, in, up, up here in, in the Himalayas uh, between uh, Pakistan and Afghanistan. Uh, this material was often a little more reddish orange, but uh, sometimes similar to what, what we found in Ramona. Again, sizes were not very large. Um, after this, uh, a new source showed up in Namibia, and this material was unusual in that it had a, a little bit of a peachy reddish orange color, or peachy orange, uh, which made it unique from other sources, and it became known as Mandarin Garnet. And this came from Namibia, uh, way up in the north, right near Angola. A very remote source, and it produced for a very short period of time. Uh, currently, no production is coming out of there. But fortunately, shortly after that, in 1994, uh, we find material in Nigeria. Um, Nigeria produced uh, from the, it's from the southwest corner of the country near Benin. Um, and what was unique about it was the sheer size of the material that came out of there. The largest spessartites we'd ever seen to date. Uh, stones, 15, 20 carats, clean stones. Uh, again, material that looked a lot like the little three mine and a lot like much of the material that came out of uh, Namibia. And much of it was sold as Namibian, which is something that happens in this business quite often. You get a source that uh, has a high value to it and you find another source and everybody for a long time tries to say it's from the more valued source just to get a higher dollar value out of it. But Nigeria was a beautiful color on its own, um, produced for quite some time, but right now there's very little if any production coming out of there. Uh, shortly after that, uh, I started going to Madagascar in 2001. And lo and behold, we find more material in Madagascar. Uh, Madagascar is the big island off the coast of Africa, about the size of California, um, unique for its lemurs, and 75% and of anything that lives on that island only lives there. It's totally endemic to that island. Uh, the Spessartite garnet was found uh, south of the capital, Antananarivo. Um, and west of uh, Ansira Bay. Um, this material was pretty much reddish orange, um, not quite as valued as, as the Mandarin or, or the Nigerian material, but a beautiful stone on its own. A uh, larger material, I cut 126 carat. Now that stone was special because 
it was a red color that you would hope ruby would ever look like. You get it in home lighting, it's just a pure red stone. A um, little bit different than most of the material from there. But uh, Madagascar produced large, clean stones and is still producing today. Um, then back, uh, about in 2007, we started seeing some new material that was called Fanta Orange. Uh, very orange to yellowish orange, um, capable of producing really brilliant stones, but the problem with most of it was the inclusions that were in it. It had a, a commonly a uh, crystalline inclusion spread through the stone that affects brilliance. Um, so getting clean stones out of this source is very, very difficult. But the color is unique in the whole gem world. Uh, rarely do you see another gem of this color. Uh, the value that we place on Spessartite uh, is related just like diamond to the four C's. Uh, clarity is a big issue in garnets. Uh, it is very, very difficult to find them clean. When you're buying them, you would like to have an eye clean stone, something that's crisp and bright uh, is really what we would be looking for. Don't expect flawless stones. It rarely happens in, in Spessartite garnets. The color of the garnet is extremely important. Uh, a garnet that is too dark will not produce the brilliance that the garnet is capable of. All the garnets have a high refractive index. Spessartite type garnet has an extremely high refractive index, one of the highest in all of the colored gems. It, it goes as high as 1.81 uh, refractive index. Um, diamonds 252, which is higher, but for a colored stone, Spessartite is about as high as you're typically going to get. And what this relates to is brilliance. You get a diamond-like brilliance out of a finely cut Spessartite that has high clarity. Uh, carat weight uh, also is very important. Uh, stones up to 3 carat, uh, typically from most sources, will be available. Larger than that is difficult to get. Over 10 carat is extremely rare in Spessartite garnet. <clears throat> and lastly, cutting. I mean, you can't stress cutting enough. We specialize in fine cutting, and the difference that you'll see in a fine cut stone to an average cut stone is huge. I mean, you really have to concentrate on a fine cut. And fine cutting means cutting the the pavilion or the bottom portion of the stone to proper angles so you don't get a window. A window is something that you can you can look right through the stone. A really poorly cut stone you can read through the bottom of the stone. This is something we want to avoid. You need the stone cut to proper eye angles and good symmetry and when you do this to a fine garnet with medium color you get extremely high brilliance. So. Shop us uh, at moregems.com. We have a wide variety of stones, not just Spessartites, uh, but Spessartite is a stone well worth owning. Uh, we also have a website called tanzaniteJewelryDesigns.com, which of course we specialize in Tanzanite. Okay, thank you for your interest in colored gems, and uh, keep looking. We'll be doing more videos.